little folks being on black and basically you can watch earth step its way through the magnetical connections to the sun it seems to be walking quite correctly today the earth is not drunk this is the uh, live magnetosphere player latest data not live for a second. We used to have a live, but they cut off the live stream. Now we just get this, which is whatever, as long as we can get it. We used to have to go to stills anyway, so. As it walks, as we spider all these connections back here, people look at it as idea that this is, and it is, it's just like flow. This is airflow. There are all kinds of magneticals. It's not just the one. This is the one strong one we always cling to and keep going. If we ever seen us just sit here and spin and not keep going through another magnetical, then it would be issues. <laughs> but uh, consequences, we would have to see and watch the data and then see what we do. But uh, as we keep climbing through our trip that we follow and get drugged behind the sun, and as we go over here to the right, you'll see the live streaming data that we look for when we look at what we're going to have a quake. And if we go over here, you'll see a uh, dip. Since I got it up on 400, I'll kind of go, and then we'll have the whole plot here in a minute. We spike here when we get a C or M class or any flare pretty much, you'll see a spike. And what we're going to do is more than likely we are going to, when we get a dip here, that's our signature also having a C or M class. This is basically an M class signature. And more than likely we're going to either, it looks like pretty much we're going to get another C or an M. It's starting to, you know, somewhat plateau for a little bit, but it'll probably, more, it looks to have an energy to wanting to take a dip. So, this is our signature. Let me pull it down a little bit and we'll get your plot on that. Remember, this is just Earth staying connected to the sun's magneticals, okay? And as you see, we come down here, and then I'll go to our chart. And as you can see, we're probably going to get another, because the, the number one indicator here is our density. And if you watch it, it's climbing. It's not dropping yet. So as long as this doesn't drop here, more than likely we're going to repeat and get another C or an M, or we're going to get some kind of a flare. And it's usually at least C to an M, because you only get the smaller CMEs off the sun when we have lower density. Okay? we got high density right now, so we're going to keep on popping. And then the density will go down, and it'll build up again. Also, give you some history on some quakes here in a minute. But first, we're going to go ahead and go to, uh, and remember here, this is your spiking up here on your X-ray flux. You're always going to have this when we get a, that's pretty much your flare, CME flare, CME reactive flare off the other planets, remember? But when the sun does a CME electrical flux, it does a CME, coronal mass ejection, okay? And then this is how they can keep pretty much predicted and stuff like that. The problem is NASA has raised the bar on, because they're trying to make it look like that we're not in a solar maximus. Uh, that's just something that human beings come up with. The idea the sun's doing what it's doing, and it's at maximus or more, and it'll do it whenever the objects in space are going to make it do it because it's just in a gigantic electrical motor. Well, let's go ahead and go here and we'll see that you get the M and you get your C and you get your C and then you can go back and you'll see the spikes and how it references to what we're seeing right here. Okay, so like I say, the number one thing is the most important, the density, because the density is building and it's not dropping yet. I'm showing a sign of dropping, so we're probably going to get another C or an M. And as you see, we got this M flare today. Okay, Boulder. And now let me t take a look and show you this. Me being an electrician, this is how I got intrigued when I started seeing them cross phasing. As soon as we get the cross phasing, then we get the M flare. So there's lots of things to look at, and the density, and then the cross phasing. So you watch your density, watch this cross phasing, and whenever you see it starting to do the, any kind of action spiking and do a cross phase like this, it's getting ready to cross phase. So we're going to get another M or C class because basically it did this here. And more than likely we're behind on that a little bit and it'll end up showing. And it, basically we are because uh, the hours. So 
right there, it's going to end up getting, we're going to get another flare more than likely off the sun because then that generates this and all that starts from the density building here and also the drop on our electron flux. And every time you get a drop on the electronic flux, drop, drop. These are C's here. This is an M class flare drop here. Okay. So I wish I could show you uh, the beta gamma off the sun, but they're not letting us see that. And I either not letting us see the beta gamma because they don't want you to realize that the nuclear radii in space connect to what's going on here in Earth. And it seeps through our atmosphere and it gets attracted. They very magnetical and they can attract from almost infinite distances. Okay, uh, radioactive beta will and basically they have that, but we can't get any readings because they basically it's just more than likely too dramatic for us probably to to. Uh, well, we can understand it. They just don't want us to see it. So something's up there. Hello NASA, let us see it. My colleagues in the chat room, basically, there's our flare that came off the sun that I was showing you on Sunday. We're lucky that it doesn't come towards Earth. So that's that one, and that major one is still coming, too. So this, don't re rely on this map, because the idea, we're getting hit by that there, right here. And that's that major, uh, I'll have to try to see if I can dig up the map on that. Now, this is 6.9 quakes, okay? Just 6.9s, okay? And there you go, 6.9, 6 to 9 magnitude earthquakes, okay? 6, 6 to 9 magnitude. So this is from 87, that's where this timeline begins. But when you look at it along the whole thing, we are climbing, okay? And we're climbing a lot, okay? As we go back. So with uh, NASA in putting the bar up and saying the solar maximum is, is going to be dipping right now, we are still climbing and it shows nothing of dipping so with their forecast they can't forecast that far off and they know it so basically all they can do is watch just like reading an electrical current because they can't control the sun they can control a lot of weather down here on earth but they can't control the sun i.e you can see how high we are and i'll make it a little bit smaller so you get a little bit better idea what's going on on this and you can go to solar artists and see this here map and I just wanted to blow it up so that we would basically go through here and see the height and see how high, okay? So we have built, because we have built from way down here, okay? Going straight across, we are way up high, see? Because it's real faint lines, and they're trying to help NASA. Well, basically, actually, I think Solar Artist is trying to show the truth, because NASA has screwed around with this, uh, let me show you their prediction map. They've raised the bar. So the idea, they're trying to make it look like this is not solar maximus. There really is no solar maximus because we don't want to see solar maximus. Solar maximus would be a uh, supernova, okay? So you, this here you can see we climbed, okay? And this is basically currently present, okay? So we, we're climbing like crazy. Because this is the bar they raised. Normally it was down here. This was their old prediction. If you can find, you can go, actually what we need to do is we need to dig. Somebody needs to go in and dig. I don't have time. Go in and dig up the old radio flux progression map where they would show the red line farther down. It was it was earlier predicted to be way down here, and now they've raised the bar, okay? Because they could see, everybody would go in here and see this, and the idea that well, we were way up here in Solar Maximus, and now the idea that we're building, but so now they've brought the bar up. So, and they had it down here. They can't predict that far off in the future because they don't have enough long running data in years, okay? So, it's a bunch of crap and they've made it, they've just changed, they've messed around with this, okay? So here you can see that we're in our IMF polar angle, we're in the red. And our density is building not going to drop staying level there until you see a dip here we're not going to stop seeing an emin for a while so and it always goes in this little lull for a little bit and then it picks back up with whatever's out there so and as you can see our coronal a little bit close on on the north a little bit normal but south pole way off center and uh we got this action here there you go sun's going cold sun's just having a good day one good thing is it's very good magnetical strength for Earth, 
and everything that's in and around the magnetical field of the sun. I.e. this is just a prediction line and they always have it drawn like this because they're always hoping that the sun is going to go down in activity and as you can see we've been building and we were higher back here you see so we are in solar maximus the idea we dipped a little bit in the month and now we're building back up again so why are you saying that we're not in solar maximus we're building okay this is spiking and more than likely it'll build some more as we already seen an M flare so this is just a hope that we'll go down in the flaring and the CME reactive in the CME flares and yes we get CME reactive flares off planets atmospheres because this is building this is not dropping and this is building okay we get a little bit of law every 30 days but the idea we're building again right now and we're in the fall solstice and we're getting it towards earth okay so it's trying to make sure that it stays very well connected to us in the middle of the winter when we are normally farthest away from the Sun which were for winter solstice we are the closest now behind as you can see most all of the the CME action is coming towards earth okay because this is up behind and as you can see it's trying to make make or keeping magnetical connection with earth, us earth in a winter solstice keep it keeping us close mommy's keeping us close to her pretty much is what's going on see that mama or daddy either one you want to call it okay so it's keeping us locked in it's magnetical okay Basically, by showing you the actual factual, it is right here, and as we are staying very well connected, as we are staying connected, okay, so we're not going anywhere, we're staying in the prison with uh, the sun, which is good, good to be in the uh, arms of connection, to be gravity, so you stay standing on the ground so you don't float like the moon Chile and Brazil be forewarned you're gonna get some more action and as you can see here on the structure of the earth this is areas to be watched out for because more than likely there's eventually going to be some separation it's history has taught us here you can see there's separation and also it wants to do some separation here and also in the United States we're worried about the new Madrid right here from the Detroit lakes all the way down through the Mississippi could end up being a big old stretch mark there someday ie the trench that's out here is very deep we will stretch earth is going to keep stretching and growing yes growing ladies and gentlemen okay we're not getting smaller so this is the latest for earthquake dangers is right here okay so basically we're calm right now and that pictures that I showed you from the Sun with all that flaring it will end up heating up the earth and we will it will tug us along those magneticals like it's been tugging us as you see it's not declining so here on the graphs we're a little bit calm right now later in the day earthquakes either that or tomorrow so it's calm now and we're gonna build to another bunch of quakes okay calm now more quakes soon. And as you can see here, they've six hour M1s. Okay. And then we'll cruise down through here and see what they have. And basically, we'll get down and we'll see what's going to be our new magneticals that are going to be fast growing sunspots. Yes, because they have to create, the sun has to create more magneticals to keep us coming after her, being drugged behind her. And there's our aurora over there on the North Pole. And you can scroll and read this stuff here. The showing of the, of the eclipse. And we'll get down to our magneticals because anything out in space that's larger tugs and pulls on us, or at least stro strokes and strums it like a harp, the uh, electrical magneticals of the sun to us. So as you see, we're going to get in bigger sizes. So around December 12th, it doesn't really matter about the distance that much. The larger the object, the more the activity that we get for earthquakes. So, yes, this stuff is small, but it does disturb the electrical connections enough to let the earth stretch and grow, okay? And then the number one thing is our equator, okay? It's, it's like a uh, railroad track, okay? It balances the earth. Okay, the equator balances the earth. It's got more density. Okay, that's why it's always hotter there. That's our big connection 
to the sun besides the north and the south.